Welcome to the first episode on the Soil Doctor Tool, where I dive deep into the principles of organic nutrition and how to create explosive plant growth and amazing plant health. So for years I've been obsessed with determining which organic amendments to apply to your soil and in what quantities. And I've taken all my learning and experience working with hundreds of growers as a certified crop advisor, and I've turned it into a single tool called the Soil Doctor Tool. So in this series, I'm going to walk you through the guts and the, the foundations of the tool. And in doing so, I hope to give you the power to implement these same principles in your operation. To be honest, this series is for professional, serious growers. It's technical. I'm going to quickly go very deep. So if I lose you, I'd suggest starting with my online soil course on my website that will get you from zero to 60 very quickly. I'm gonna dive into what the Soil Doctor tool is and I'm gonna highlight a few principles that will make you a successful grower. So principle number one is I built this tool with the premise that growers should be testing and using objective data to guide decision making. This is especially important for growers who want consistency. In my opinion, Profitability in farming is all about consistency and replicating results, not one time, but 10 times. The popular mantra is test, don't guess. If you're buying soil amendments, you should be doing so based on testing. Principle number two is the Soil Doctor tool spits out a customized recommendation of raw mineral amendments that can be purchased anywhere. These are raw ingredients. They're essentially commodities that are very similar or identical between different brand names. Why this is important is it gives you um, independence. And it gives you independence from branded bottled nutrients, what I call Brondo. And if you don't get that reference, go watch Idiocracy. Okay, the third principle is the Soil Doctor tool is for organic living soils. These are engineered medias that are made of organic materials such as peat or cocoa, a large portion of compost, and usually some kind of aggregate. What have been traditionally termed potting soils in gardening. Most growers reuse their soil for as long as possible, which improves the microbial diversity and the overall fertility. But in doing so, they need to re-amend it after each harvest and during the season. Traditional agronomic principles for topsoil, topsoil being sand, silt, and clay, just don't really apply to peat-based soilless medias. And this tool has been designed specifically for amending these medias organically. And the fourth or the fourth principle is that the recommendations from the tool are immediate and this is invaluable. So minimizing the time between when you take a soil test and when you take action on the results is very important as things change really quickly in farming. The Soil Doctor tool uses a mathematical model that I built which looks at numbers on the soil tests, both the Malik 3 and the saturated paste test. You should always get both of these tests together when testing a peat-based media. It then calculates what is high and what is low. And the entire agronomic model is based on target nutrient numbers, which aren't always fixed. The calcium target may be 120 parts per million or 200 parts per million based on the level of other cations, for example. And I'll cover that in a later episode. The tool takes a three-prong approach, which I recommend to any grower approaching nutrient management. The first priority is it identifies excesses. If something is too high, it'll tell you it's too high and it'll propose a solution. The second is it aims to create sufficiency. So I established the target numbers by first doing my own mixing and testing for over a year and then working with growers over five years seeing more than 10,000 soil tests. And these targets change slightly based on the context of your operation, specifically how long your plants are in the soil. And the third approach, the third priority is balance. Plants love balance. They're always working to achieve charge balance, water balance, energy balance, and nutrient balance. The Soil Doctor tool is similar. The target nutrient levels are gonna change based on the concentrations of other nutrients. So I get three questions all the time. The first is how often should I test my soil? Second is what should I apply once my plants are already growing? And the third is how do I take a soil test? So how often should you test? It sounds simple, but you test when you want to know something. If you want to customize your nutrient inputs on a weekly basis, then you should be testing weekly. If you mostly just plant into a well-amended soil and let it 
let the plants crank for a month before applying anything, then you don't need to test during that period. For cannabis production specifically, the minimum I'd suggest would be a soil test and a tissue test, sorry, a soil test before planting to determine pre-plant amendments, and another soil test combined with a tissue test at week one or week two of flower to make adjustments and sort of guide your, your inputs for the flower cycle. The idea in nutrient management is apply, test, apply, test at the right intervals at which you're making decisions. So the second question, what should I apply once the plants are already growing? The soil doctor tool recommendation can be used for pre-plant amendments or mid-season amendments. It guides you if you want to use liquid products midway through a growing cycle, which are faster acting than dry amendments because of greater surface area. What you should be applying mid-season is completely dependent on three things. What the soil doctor test and the soil doctor tool says, what the plant tissue test says, and what your eyeballs say. So combine those three tools to determine what to top dress or dredge. The third question, how do I take a soil test? I highly recommend getting a complete test from Logan Labs. This provides you a look at the, the total bank account of nutrients in your soil, along with the immediately soluble nutrients in your soil solution, what the plant roots see today. The reality is somewhere between the two numbers, but I argue that you must see both tests to make the best decision. If you want the details on how to get a soil test, check out the link in the notes below. So next episode, I'm going to cover phosphorus. I'm gonna walk you through the basics of phosphorus, the best organic products to use for phosphorus, when to use them, and at what rates.